welcome to the Ladybug Laboratory Podcast. I'm Lily and I will be your host. Uh, this is a podcast all about various fiber crafts. And um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram as ladybug.lily on Ravelry as Ladybug Lily. And um, there is a podcast group on Ravelry, the Ladybug Laboratory Podcast group. And that is where you will find A, the show notes, and B, we are currently doing a mini skein swap. So if you haven't heard about that, um, there is a thread in the Ravelry group. Please check it out. Submissions end April 13th, I believe. Friday. Yeah, the 13th. Um, And all the details are in that thread. Um, If you have any questions, please post them in that thread. Please sign up. All right, so today we've got a couple of things. We're going to talk about some finished objects, as well as a my Stitches West haul, um, some other crafts, and a tag segment. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so finished objects. I have two today, and you can only see one. So the first finished object, if you're a returning viewer, you might know, are my brother-in-law's slippers which I forgot to take a picture of. (laughs) So I made my brother-in-law some thrummed slippers for Christmas and uh, they, I kept frogging and redoing and frogging and redoing and I eventually kind of made my own pattern. Um, And I knit them while I was there and kept trying them on his feet. And so I finished one before I left, about 12 hours before I left. So there was no way I was going to finish the other one. So I packed it up because I couldn't bring it on the plane. And uh, I finished it when I got back. Yeah, so I sent those to him and I forgot to take a picture. Oops. I do have a picture of the inside of them, which is useless, but I will put it here anyway. So yeah, those were my brother-in-law's slippers. Oh well. Uh, The second finished object that I have is a pair of socks that I've been working on. And these are my Stern Taller socks. Now they are knee highs, so they're kind of flopping a little bit here. Um, The pattern is Stern Taller, and it is by Lota Gregor, I think, um, is how you say that. And I used MJ Yarns, I don't remember the base, but it was the Axonite colorway. And the stitch definition on this yarn is incredible. It's this beautiful brown. It's not as muted as it's showing up there. It's more warm, chocolatey. Um, so they have this design at the top, which you're going to have trouble seeing, but I will try and show you anyway. It's got this cable. Yeah, you can sort of see it. It's much more obvious when it's on the leg. Maybe. There's like a little cable there, sort of. It starts here, it crosses, and then it goes there and it crosses again, and it comes up here, and then we get this stitch. Um, I'm going to take this off the sock water. So these bot lockers, by the way, I got at Stitches West 2017. Okay. So then it looks like it sort of has a frill at the top, but it actually doesn't, because when you wear it, it stretches out like this. Um, And that works and functions as the cuff. Um, So I did not change very much about this pattern. The only thing that I changed is this horizontal cable right here. like right across there. That was not in the original pattern, so I incorporated a horizontal cable. And this is the other sock. Now I have both of them done. Last time you saw this, um, I had started the second sock and I had gone up to about here and realized that the original sock, I did a different stitch size. I did the 60 stitch and I had been doing the 54 on 56 on here. So after you saw it, I frogged back to here and then I did the rest of it. Um, It was a vanilla project right up until about here. Um, So while I had these going, I wasn't 
working on my vanilla socks that you saw last time, which is why these were finished first. And I finished them the night before Stitches West at like 2 o'clock in the morning that Friday night. And uh, yeah, so I was able to wear them the next day on Saturday to the showroom. Um, so those are my finished objects. We are going to move on and I'm going to show you my Stitches West 2018 haul. It's going to be pretty quick, and there is a surprising addition that is going to run right into other crafts. Um, before I go into that, though, Stitches West is, of course, a yarn event, and I'm going to another yarn event at the beginning of April. I'm going to the Port Seattle Portland Yarn Train. So if you're going to be there and you see me, come say hi, introduce yourself. Um, yeah. All right. Stash. This year, I went in with some plans, but I wasn't going to just get yarn unless I was in love with it, because I have a lot of yarn, and I did not need any more. So first, I'm going to show you the notions that I got. Um, first of all, every year, I get some... Sorry. I get some Lolo lotion bars. Uh, because I tried them a couple of years ago and they're amazing. So I got two mini ones. This one is in the sunshine uh, scent. I almost said flavor. And this one is in red clover. Come on now. Maybe not. Okay. And then I got a full sized one in vanilla moon. And I also got a cuticle bar. And I did get a chapstick, but it is at work. So that was what I got from Lolo. Um, I really, well, okay, it's technically, I think the brand is Barmaids, uh, but then Lolo is their, like, moisturizer thing. Um, I really recommend them. They're really great for knitting. They don't leave your hands oily at all. And I also got three Notions tins. So I got this big one, this pattern on it, and it opens like that. And I got this medium sized one. It's like that. It's got this pattern. And then I got this little one that slides open. It's got these. Uh, so I love those. They're really cute. I really like them. Um, this one, you may know if you've been a long term viewer, is the same size and matches my ladybug tin, which is missing. I had a really beautiful sort of rectangular bag with these tiny bunnies on it and all my notions were in it. It had a hand carved, ugh, I don't want to go into it, it's gone. I've been looking for it and looking for it, I can't find it. The only thing I can think of is my doctor's office, that's the only place I haven't checked yet. Um, and I really hope it's there because it had a lot of sentimental stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway, on from the sad. The other notion-y thing that I got, I showed last week, which was these three pins. Stitches West 2016, 17, and 18. And the bag, nevertheless, she knitted. And that will move us straight into the yarn, because I got that bag from Canon Hand Dyes, and they have these really cool mini sets. So I'll show you this one first. This is Fall Rainbow on Bruce Yak, which is 70 mer Superwash Merino, 20 Yak, 10 Nylon. Um, and each one of these is like 20 or 22 yards. So it's kind of shiny, so you can't, there we go. It's these super tiny minis. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with this, but I love the colors. And this one is Bright Fierce Color, and I know what I'm going to do with this. Um, it's Charles Merino Fingering, which is 80% Superwash, 20% Nylon. And this one, I'm going to make a Happy Potamus, <laughs> um, which if you don't know, is the pattern 
I don't know who it's by off the top of my head. I'll put it down here, but it's like a little stuffed animal hippopotamus and it's crocheted and it's really adorable. Um, excuse me. I have the pattern. I've had it for a while and I just keep not quite having the yarn that I want to do it with. And, um, yeah, so I, I saw those in the sample they had, they had actually made one and oh, I loved it. So yeah, that is what I'm going to use that for. So the next yarn that I have is these four skeins of DK weight yarn. They're sort of like a shimmery, rich, warm marine teal color. And it is Magpie Yarns in the Swanky DK base. And the colorway is Masquerade. You're not going to be able to read that, are you? Oh well, the colorway is Masquerade. Um, it's 80% Superwash Merino, 10 Cashmere, 10 Nylon. And it's a DK weight. And I'm going to make the Eason shawl that I tried to make this summer with the 820 stitch cast on or whatever it was that I didn't end up making because the whole swatch gauge was all wrong. Which on a shawl, you don't do a gauge swatch, right? Because you you get a little bit into it, you don't like it, you rip it out. That does not work when it's bottom up. Oh my god. 820 stitch cast on. What is that? Oh wait. So that is my yarn haul. And the next part, excuse me, um, is a little bit exciting. Surprise! I got a spindle. <laughs> so you may be looking at this if you know what a drop spindle is and going, what the heck is that? Because this is not a drop spindle. Um, it is a support spindle and I walked by the booth where they were doing this and there was a woman who was using the support spindle. She was trying it out to get her um, next spindle and it was magic and I just, I could not stop staring. And so of course I had to try and I spent about an hour and a half at the booth and I figured out how to spin. Um, first time I've ever spun in my entire life. Uh, so worth it. And um, so then of course I had to get a spindle. Duh! looked like magic. Oh, it was so cool. So the um, company, which I cannot remember, but I will put it in the down bar, is a husband and wife team. And the husband does all the woodwork and the wife does all the glass blowing. So if you haven't seen a support spindle, the way that it works is you have like a little support. Now, of course, you could just do this on like a table or something. But... And then you put your spindle on top of it and you just spin it. Like, spin um, sorry, it's hard to balance. So this is my spindle. It called to me. It's like a wand. It shows me. Um, it's got this beautiful blown glass, almost acorn shape on the bottom, sparkly. And then the detailing is got some trees and it goes up into some grapevines. If I ever do a Harry Potter cosplay, this is my wand. This wand has chosen me. Yeah, um, it is beautiful. I fell in love. Um, and so then I spun some things. <laughs> um, I will show you, well, first of all, I have, I went over to a place nearby and the woman who um, own the stall, well, the wife that was working at the stall, she said, we get these little samples from over there, and so you can just grab some samples to practice with. So I got three, two of which I'm showing you. Hint, hint, that means the other two are now yarn. Um, and this one is green, this one is like a rust, rusty red, and they are from, I don't know the company name, uh, Wonderland Dye Works which is on Etsy, and it's 80% merino, 20% Tessa silk. And I've been told that silk is a hard one to start with, but like that's what was at the booth and that's what I learned on, so I figured I would just go with that same fiber. 
Um, so the first, so these ones are about three quarters of an ounce and they're like four dollars. So I got four of them. Well, I got three. And this one is the first yarn that I ever made. So it's pretty thick and thin. Um, oh, come on, please focus. There we go. It's pretty thick and thin. And it's actually two ply. So I spun the whole thing as one strand and it looked like it was going to be impossible to work with. Um, and so I decided to do, I don't even know what it's called anymore. I'll put it in the down bar. I looked it up. Plying where you basically ply from both ends and ply them together. Um, and this is what it ended up looking like. So I'm actually pretty happy with it. I broke it while I was trying to ply it, so that's what that is. Um, yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I kind of overspun it, but you know what? This is my first ever hand spun, and I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of it, and it was so therapeutic and so, like, so worth, so worth it. And, you know, I came home from Stitches and I said, so there's good news and there's bad news. Good news, <laughs> they didn't get very much yarn. The bad news, <laughs> and then I pulled out my spindle. Um, so the other one, well, I can't find the other half of it, so I'll show you later. But it was like this grayish purple fiber. And basically what happened is I, so I spun about half of that blue that night when I got home from Stitches. And, uh, so cool. And, um, I had so much trouble drafting it. I had so much trouble. And so I went back to the fiber store the next day on Sunday and I said, what was I doing wrong? And so she was showing me how to draft. She pulled out one of the little samples and she was just showing me on the sample. Um, and she said, you, you keep the sample, which was really kind of her. Um, and so that's the second one that I tried on, and it's this grayish purple. It's not really my color, but I'm really proud of how this came out. So this is a single ply, and I wound it onto a toilet paper roll off the spindle. This one is much more even than my first one by, like, a lot. Um, so for this one, I decided to split it in half and weigh both halves and make sure they were about the same amount so that the plying would be a lot easier. Um, but looking at it, I might be able to use it as a single ply. It's more consistent and like actually looks like yarn. Um, yeah, so I've got that. And of course I've got the two, these two. And so then of course I had to get some more fiber to work on. I mean, obviously. So I have this, which is from the same company, same base, 80% merino and 20% tessa silk. And this is a mini wonder bundle, and it is called Dreamy Sea. And then I got this, which is one giant braid of fiber that the... The little bundle is about three ounces, and this is about 4.7 ounces of fiber. This is beautiful green. Oh, so pretty. So, I spin now! Surprise! <laughs> um, if you guys are interested, I can try and put up a close-up video of the spinning and what that looks like. Um, no promises that it'll actually work, but if you're interested, I can try. No promises that I'll actually do it, but again, let me know if that's something that you would like to see. Um, I'm sort of going on and off with this, like I'll be like, okay, I'm going to spin and spin for like three days and then put it aside for a week or so. Um, yeah, so I, I've been in a spinning mood again. Well, I've been, if you watched the last part A of this, you'll see that I've been um, 
doing a lot more crochet than I normally do. So I'm kind of in a crochet mood, actually. I think I'm just in a something other than knitting mood to get my knitting mojo back. Um, so I think when I finish Auntie D's blanket, then I'm going to do some spinning and see how that goes. Um, or maybe some cross stitch. Oh boy. I have too many crafts. I've been in a sewing mood recently, but this room is a mess. I can't even get to my sewing machine. Um, you know, I decided I was good, like, I got a new desk and I'm cleaning everything out and reorganizing it. So it's much more usable, but you know, I don't have a lot of time to do that. And so I'm just doing it like an hour or two a week. Um, and so right now it's looks like a hurricane came through here. But hopefully it'll be much nicer by the time that I'm done. Um, hopefully I finish in the next month or so. Um, yeah, so that is my stash from my haul from Stitches West and my um, other craft of spinning, which I now do, apparently. <laughs> um, oh, and as a side note, I I think this one, these three, are three things that my mother-in-law works at a historical museum. So, you know, it's like a working farm, historical working farm that is a museum and it's, um, it's got, you know, the sheep and the weaving and the kitchen and, and so she works as somebody there, you know, in historical garb, working historically accurate things. And so these are things that she spun on the job. And I was thinking, I don't know exactly what type of wool they are. I keep meaning to find out from her, but I think those two might go together really well. And that would be really cool to have her first hand spun and my first hand spun in something. Who knows what it will be, but um, I'll put those back later. But yeah, I think that would be really cool. Um, so at this point, I'm going to move on to the tag your it section, and I will see you there. So by the way, for those of you that aren't familiar with the tag your it thing. This is going to be a little bit more about personal things, but before I move on to that, I want to ask you guys a couple of things. Number one, does anybody have any suggestions for what I can do with those yarns? Um, that would be wonderful. I don't remember what the second suggestion was. Oh, any tips or tricks for starting spinners? Um, the only way I've really been able to spin is by pre-drafting a giant section and then doing that. So any tips for drafting on the go or anything like that would be awesome. Um, yeah, and now I'm gonna move on to the tag your it section. So this is a series of questions, which I will put in the show notes, um, that have been making their way around the podcasts. I've seen a couple of people answer these. Um, I'm still pretty behind in my podcast viewing. I'm in December now. <laughs> Um, but I got an ear burn on Ravelry from Jennifer of the Color and Life podcast that she hosts along with John Michael, her son. And, um, so they got tagged. I don't remember who they got tagged by and they tagged me. So I figured I would go ahead and answer those questions and then tag the next few people. Um, yeah. So question one, who are you? I am Lily. Um, when did you start, when and why did you start knitting or crocheting or spinning or weaving? Well, I started spinning a couple of weeks ago, as we just discussed. Um, I started knitting when I was about five. My grandmother taught me and, um, she was knitting and she pulled out her mother's knitting basket. Her mother was Lily, who I'm named after. If you guys were around for the story about the sweater that I made her, you've heard a lot of this already. Um, but I'll go ahead and answer it instead of having to send new people on a scavenger hunt. <laughs> um, her grandmother was Lily, who I'm named after, and she knit a lot. And so my grandmother had pulled out, or sorry, her mom was Lily. So my grandmother had pulled out her mom's knitting basket. I was about five. I was, you know, the basket was sitting at her feet. She was sitting in her recliner um, at her old colonial house. And I was sitting on the floor and I was fascinated by it. And I asked her to teach me. And she had some yarn, and she said she didn't have any needles. And I said, well, what about those? And I saw these needles sticking out of her bag. And she said, well, those are, those are my mom's, and they're old and fragile and very special to me, which 
I understood as a five-year-old, you know, I, I could get that. And I said, well, if there's any, if I can find something else for you to teach me on, would you teach me? And she said, absolutely. So I learned on barbecue skewers <laughs> and uh, I wanted to make a scarf. And in her wisdom, my grandmother suggested a scarf for my American Girl doll because that would be faster. And boy, was she right. So I made, it's at my parents' house. I'll, I'll show it sometime. I made like this long. I think it was 10 stitches wide. And it's got a couple of dropped stitches in it, and it's not the best. Um, but you know what? I made it, and I even added tassels, and I was so proud of it, and I completely dropped knitting ever again. And then when I was about seven, um, a friend of my mom's taught me how to crochet. And I did a little bit, and then I forgot how to do it. And then when I was a little older, I was about 13 or 14, I relearned how to knit and crochet again. Um, and I relearned how to knit again from my grandmother. We were going on a trip and we stopped at a local yarn store for some reason. I can't remember why. Um, and I wanted to learn a thing. And so I made a scarf where I took two novelty yarns and one of them was like that fun fur yarn and one of them was that yarn that's got like two strands and then the ribbons in between it and I knit a scarf with those together and you know it was a cool effect um, and um, so that's how I sort of picked up knitting again and then I did it on and off through high school and around the same time uh, another friend of my mom completely different taught me how to crochet and I was making some sort of bobble blanket I have no idea what ended up happening to that and so I kind of did it on and off through high school and about halfway through college I got really into it again and it all started because I wanted to make a gift for at the time my boyfriend no my husband and I found a knitting pattern for a TARDIS netbook cover like the little little netbooks and uh, actually it was a tablet cover but I made it for his tart for his TARDIS <laughs> for his netbook um, and I taught myself to knit again. And, you know, I had sort of remembered, but I taught myself a little bit of color work and a little bit of purling. And, um, yeah, so then it sort of took off from there. And it, you know, got to the point where I knit all of my bridesmaids' shawls for our wedding. And I just knit so much now. And I crochet on and off. Um, I think I'm more of a knitting person, but I've been getting back into crochet recently. Um, I wove when I was in third grade maybe. I grew up in the Boston area and of course the Lowell Mills are around there and so we took a field trip there and they had, at the very end they had these like tiny um looms that all the kids got to weave a little thing on and mine is you know placemat sized but I fell in love and ever since then I've wanted to have a loom and I mean I remember as a kid always asking for a loom for Christmas and someday someday I will have a loom probably next time I go to Stitches West or the time after that, I will get a loom. When this place is cleaned up and I have space for a loom. Um, yeah. Uh, my favorite or proudest make is probably the sweater that I made for my grandmother. Um, the quick version is basically she's had a lot of medical problems. She had a surgery that went wrong and it's taken her more than a few years to heal from it. She's still not completely healed and several of her friends have died and she just feels really alone and isolated and um, she's really proud of me and my knitting and how it sort of, you know, my namesake, her mother, right? And um, everybody always says that I would have loved Grandma Lily and she would have loved me, but of course we never got to meet. And um, so I wanted to Hi, everybody. Um, I am back for the rest of this, in case you didn't notice. Um, I'm wearing something else. It is the next day, Monday, March 12th, and I had to stop because my phone ran out of memory. And by the time I was able to clear out the memory, there was no more light. So the light is fading right now, but we should still be good. Um, I'm actually, normally I face toward the light, but I think today I'm going to turn so that my glasses don't glow. Oh, well, that didn't really make a difference. Sorry. 
All right, so I'm not 100% sure where I was. I think I was talking about my proudest make. And I'm just going to start that story over again, and I will cut out any previous information from the last time. So my proudest make is a sweater that I made my grandmother. And this is the same grandmother who taught me how to knit. Um, and she had learned from her mother, Grandma Lily. And everybody told me that, you know, I would have... Grandma Lily and I really would have clicked if we had ever met. And um, so she was going through a really rough time. She had lost a lot of her friends and she was having a, a botched surgery and having issues um, healing from that. And um, I wanted to give her something that would let her know that she was loved and, you know, that she could physically, physically wrap around herself. And when Grandma Lily was still alive, the whole family lived in upstate New York, near the border of Canada. And every year for Christmas, she would make them a worsted weight Fair Isle sweater. Which is great when you live in upstate New York, but she now lives in Florida, so it's not so great. And so I decided that I wanted to make something that she would wear, but was reminiscent of those sweaters she used to get from Grandma Lily. Or, I guess she's my great-Grandma Lily, but my mom always referred to her as Grandma Lily, so... That's how I refer to her. And um, so I found a fingering weight pattern that had a Fair Isle, um, oh my goodness, yoke, Fair Isle yoke, and it was steaked. And I completely adapted the pattern to make a better size, and I used wool that was super washed, so it was not great for steaking. It was massive, um, and I'm so proud of it. I am so proud of it. Um, it took ages, and um, when I finally finished it, I took a short video clip of me wandering, you know, twirling around in it, and it was obviously far too big for me, but it was wonderful. Um, I was really, really proud of it. So I'll put a little bit of that video clip in here. All right, and the next question, question number four, is what is your most disastrous make? Well, my most disastrous make, I don't actually have any more because I cut it up and then I threw it away. And this was when I was in college. Um, I wanted to do, there's this Fair Isle bag. I'll put a picture of the pattern in here, what it was supposed to look like. And uh, I was on a trip with my, at the time, fiance and his family, and we stopped at a local yarn store, and we were on a canal boat, so there was a whole bunch of knitting time while we're going up and down the canal. And so at this LYS, I got a whole bunch of wool, and I was going to make this bag, and it was the first time felting, one of my first times doing color work, um, it was my first time using more than one color in a row, it was my first time really doing much of any of the skills in there, and I botched the whole thing. All of my floats were way too tight, the whole thing was taking it and then I tried to felt it and it felt it to itself and it just ended up being like a pile of nothingness and it was like two hundred dollars worth of yarn it was an absolute disaster um and then I tried to cut it up and tie it into something that I could use as uh maybe like a wool ball for the dryer nope nope I just threw it out not worth it not worth it so yeah that was my most disastrous make um do you have a favorite place to buy yarn or fiber, online or local? I'm a big fan of Etsy, and I'm also a big fan of, of course, the Black Squirrel, which is my local yarn store. And what I love so much about the Black Squirrel is that everything there, for the most part, is indie hand-dyed. Um, it's a very highly and specifically curious... I mean, they have a specific style, and that's really my style, is the sort of indie dyers... Um, usually hand dyed. It's really lovely and all sorts of unique sort of products. So that's definitely my favorite place to buy yarn. 
Um, and other than that, it would be Etsy. Um, what is your most used or most loved pattern? Right now, I use my Chocolate Rain shawl the most, which I'll put a picture of here. And that is the Waiting for Rain shawl that I did in Forbidden Woolery Midnight Spats. And I use that all the time because it's got little hints of lots of colors that I wear. And brown is my sort of base color, so uh, I, wear it. I wear it with just about everything. Oh, speaking of shawls and scarves, this I also got at Stitches West, and I forgot to show it before. And it's got it's a scarf with little sheepies on it. So, yeah, I like that. Um, all right. Um, what is your most dreaded knitting, crocheting, or spinning task? Um, I don't know that there's anything that I necessarily dread. There are things I don't enjoy as much. But I don't know that I dread anything. I mean, some people hate seaming, but I actually don't mind seaming. I just, it's one of those things that I will put off because if I'm going to do it, I have to sit down and spend a couple of hours and just do it. Um, and same with weaving in ends. But I don't know that there's really anything that I hate doing. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, what's my favorite task? Seeing it finished, seeing the finished object and being really proud of it. That feeling is, you know, looking at it and saying, I made that, I did that. Especially if it's just like a beautiful mash, match between pattern and yarn. It's, yeah, that's my favorite part. Um, what is your favorite crafty entertainment? Podcasts. Yeah, just podcasts. Uh, for patterns, do you prefer books, magazine, Ravelry, or would you rather make up your own? I use a lot of Ravelry. Um, I also really enjoy books, but I don't I have a whole bunch, as you can see, but I don't tend or let's see, oh, you can't actually see. They're like back here and back there and then underneath there. But there's three cubes of books. I love books in theory, but I don't end up using them as much as I would think. You know, I, I say, oh, they've got all these beautiful patterns. And then when I go to make something, I go, all right, let's look on Ravelry at all the fingering weight shawl patterns or whatever it is. And I don't think about it as much. Um, but I, I like Ravelry a lot. And I also like, um, I like books, but I'll make a photocopy of a book pattern to take with me. Um, what's your favorite brand of knitting needles or crochet hooks? And for spinning, what's your favorite wheel? I've never spun on a wheel. My favorite crochet hooks are clover ones with the ergonomic handles, and my favorite knitting needles by far are the Chigu interchangeables. I love them best knitting purchase I have ever made. Um, what is your favorite notion or tool? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm a big fan of the tiny scissors. I really like them. And the oh, and the little tins that you put your notions in with their stitch markers and stuff. Those are pretty nice. For stitch markers, I really like Selkie Studio. They're just so simple and elegant and useful. I just, I love them. And she actually recently left Etsy and has her own website now, so I'll put the website in the down bar. All right, um, what is your current favorite project? Ooh, that's a good question. I'm definitely in a working on my blanket for my aunt mode. Um, actually, I'm kind of just in a blanket mode, but I guess my current real favorite project? I don't know. I don't have anything that's really drawing me right now. I don't have a whole lot of knitting mojo at the moment. Favorite place to knit or crochet or spin in public? Work meetings. It's pretty great. Everybody asks me about it, and everybody, every time we start a work meeting, is like, oh, what is she working on today? And and they all really enjoy it, so that's pretty nice. What is your favorite fiber arts book? Okay, let me... Okay, this. This is the Knitter's Life list that I got... Um, from a knit along that I did with the Color and Life podcast. And 
this is something that I keep meaning to go through and I think I'm going to really get a chance to look at it once this is picked up. Um, but it is so cool. It's got like the yarn life list and all sorts of different like yarny things to try and classes to do and it's really cool. I really like it. I'm also a really big fan of both of these. They're spiral bound and this is the cast on bind off book and this is the increase decrease book. Um, I really love these as sort of reference points. Um, yeah, and one more reference book I forgot to mention and I just saw and it's one of my favorite is the Crochet Borders book. And it's really cool. Every border that they have, they show you how to do the corners, which I think is just the best part. Um, because corners are so hard to figure out. So... Yeah, I really love this book. All right, moving on to my next question. Do you have any other hobbies? Uh, reading, quilting, cross stitch. In terms of non-fiber related hobbies, I read and I also run, although I haven't been doing that in a couple of months because of life and health things, but I'm getting back into it. Um, if you could meet anyone in the fiber arts community, who would that be? I would really love to meet a lot of my podcasting friends in person. I think that would be really nice. Knit or crochet? Knit, I think. Weave or spin? Well, I guess spin because I don't have a loom, but weave. From that one time I tried it, it was amazing. Color or neutrals? I don't know. There are very certain colors that I knit with and that I wear, and I stay within that color palette, so I don't really go outside of that. But I kind of consider them all to be neutrals because I just wear them all together and they all match. But at the same time, a lot of them are colors. I don't know. That's a good question. Right now I'm in a color um, mood. Sweater or socks or hat or mitts. Hat over mittens. Socks for on the go sweaters for at home. <laughs> so those were the tag your it questions and I have not caught up on all of my podcast watching so I don't know if any of these people have been tagged already but if not um, I picked five just in case some of them have been tagged and no one is in any way obligated to do this but if you're interested I am tagging Kalisha of who is also Nadira, Nadira Tani, and she does the Quirky Monday ca Craft Cast podcast. Ooh, I can't talk today. Podcast. Eva of The Charm of It. Eva of Dar Diary of a Yarn Festival Director slash Eva Christie Hand Knitting. Kyla from Arctos Knits. And Jess Gruth from the Jess Gruth Podcast. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what you guys say, if you haven't said it already, and if you have, I will eventually catch up on your podcasts. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, and I'm going to sign out at this point. So, happy crafting, happy everything that you do. Um, have a good day! <laughs>